Thanks for staying with us. Welcome back to Crack Fight Kitchen Cooking Show. Now, to continue our lineup on the exotic meats prepared here in the Turks and Caicos Islands, what I want to introduce you guys to is oxtail. Okay? Oxtail is known to many of us here in the Turks and Caicos Islands. It's a delicacy, but I'm going to prepare it with a twist, Chef Nick's twist, today on the Crack Fight Kitchen Cooking Show. All right, you can get this from your local IJ from any one of the local stores, have your butcher prepared. It comes with a lot of fat around the edges. You can have your butcher prepared. Or what you can do when you get home, you take your knife and just cut the fat from around the edges because they will create a lot of oil in your pot. Remember, we're gonna be preparing Chef Nick's Guinness stewed oxtails with butter beans. To start this process, I'm gonna now season this. I have some Cajun season here from my famous season tray all of you have been asking about. I have some Cajun season. I'll add some season all, some complete seasoning. Let's mix this in here a bit. I'm gonna work it in here. I'm gonna dance it in here. I'm gonna dance it in here. I'm gonna dance it in here. I know you've seen that before. All right. Now to this, I'm also going to add some garlic puree. I'm gonna add some fresh thyme. as well as some habanero pepper. I'm gonna incorporate a bit of spice to this. Okay, back with my famous latex. You guys know I don't work without these. I love latex. Something sexy about them. All right, to my pot right now, I have this getting hot. Usually, with cooking oxtail, traditionally here in Turks and Caicos Islands, we brown the sugar. Now I've seen videos where people do this. They use tomato paste, they use the red wines and so forth to get that color. But I'll show you the old fashioned method of getting a traditional oxtail done. The right way to incorporate your browning color. All right? All right, this is the old fashioned way to browning, all right? Take notes, get your pen and paper, sugar. All right, this is the old fashioned way of browning the sugar. You get a beautiful brown color to your oxtails. You don't want to go too heavy on this because you ain't making sweet oxtails. You're making stew oxtails. This is only for coloring. Okay, and I'll show you just how to get it right today. Now, as this is browning, we're gonna let it get to a color that we want our oxtails to be. All right, so just take notes. Look at what I'm doing. And we'll incorporate, we will achieve this together. As our sugar has came to a point where I've got a nice golden brown color, look at that. It's something like a caramel, but not a caramel. I wanna let this heat up just a bit more to a temperature where I can add in my oxtails. Okay, adding the oxtail to this, this is where you're gonna get the color from. The oxtail matches the brown sugar. They're gonna marry, get close to one another. They're gonna fall in love and they're gonna make one unique golden color. Okay, here we go. Look at that. Now I've just taught you on the Crackpot Kitchen cooking show how to brown your oxtails, okay? All that tomato paste and ketchup and nah. This is the old fashioned way, taught to me by my father. As my oxtail is browning, I'm gonna turn it up a bit so each piece can get an even coat. I'll show you how this is going to come out in a bit. Look at that, they already start getting a wonderful color. Okay, I'll place this in the back burner. Now we're going to be doing a bit of multitasking. I'll start my pigeon peas and rice, my Turks and Caicos pigeon peas and rice with peak tails and salt beef. Now for those of you who are wondering what peak tail is, here's a bucket. You can go to your nearest local Graceway IJ. They have it right in the shelf, very affordable price. Check them out over there. You can get yourself a bucket of these. Here's what's inside the bucket. These are pigtails, okay? Now, to get a nice preparation to these, you first have to boil these, okay? This comes salted to cure it. So you have to boil these. The first water, you wanna discard that. And the second water, if you're using it, you can use the second water. But the first water will be extremely salty because the salt is in here to keep it preserved. 
okay? And, and the salt beef is the same way, okay? I bought my salt beef, prepared it. I have some boiling already. That's what I'm going to use. I'm going to show you how it looks in its prepared form. Beginning our pigeon peas and rice process, right now to my pot, I am going to add some EVOO, extra virgin olive oil. As you can see, my pot is quite hot. I am going to add two cubes of my famous butter. I am going to add some onions. I am going to add some red bell peppers, a little green bell peppers. I'm gonna shake this up a bit. Come on, calm down, baby. Grab a hold of yourself. You're letting yourself go. I'm gonna add a bit of celery. I'm gonna add a piece of habanero pepper. Two more cubes of butter. So I just round this a bit. See, my onions is browning quite quickly. Just want to sweat these out as well as achieve a golden brown color. Want to sweat this out a bit. We want to get a bit of a golden, a, a bit of a color on these. Okay, that continue to rest that down there. Let us do this thing. To that, I'm gonna add some fresh thyme. Thyme and peas and rice go well together. Nice earthiness of the thyme, complemented very well. Now I'm gonna add some garlic. Okay, with multitasking, right now I'm gonna take my spoon and turn my oxtail. Okay, we have a beautiful color going on here. See? That sugar is working its magic. Got a nice little brown color working in there. Look at that. Look at that. See, I told you. I told you. By the time I finish with you guys, you guys are gonna be professional, traditional, Turks and Caicos cookers. And yes, I said cookers. <laughs> okay, place this back here. Check on our vegetables for our onions. With multitasking. With cooking a traditional pigeon peas and rice long ago, folks used to have to wait until pigeon peas was in season, pick it, then it boils for a long period of time. Remember though, the, the, the old fashioned pigeon peas off of the tree, which you have to pick and boil for a long time, it does taste a bit better. But there's a quicker way to do things now in this modern day society. Which you can find from IGA is pigeon peas dried in the tin. Okay, you can use this in your pigeon peas and rice. It doesn't taste much different. It's quicker. It saves you the time on boiling and waiting the long hours just to get a, a pot of pigeon peas and rice done. Okay, we're going to use this pigeon peas. We're going to use some coconut milk. My onions have reached the color I wanted. I'm going to add the pigeon peas along with the stock. Now I've seen some people cook pigeon peas and rice and throw away the liquid. You don't have to do that. That's the stock of the peas, okay? That's all the flavors from the peas in there. It's the same way with boiling pigeon peas and you're using the water out of the pot in here, okay? So you can use that water in your, your pigeon peas and rice the same way, okay? I'm gonna let that come down a bit. Now, here's the secret to cooking pigeon peas and rice here. I have in my hand some Maggi, okay? Some of you may know what Maggi is. This is Maggi. We cook this in peas and rice. We cook this in peas and grits. We cook this in soup, bouillon. Everything good with Maggi. Utande? Okay. Put about two cubes of Maggi in here. Now we cook an old fashioned peas and rice now. I gotta put on my old fashioned way, so don't feel no way if I start talking that old fashioned talk. It's all in the old fashionedness of my show today. All right? Now we're gonna let this marry in a little bit. Mm -mm. Man, if you guys can smell that, the earthiness from the thyme, the garlic, the peas, the onions, the peppers. Smell of vision will be out on our next segment of the cooking show. So, guys, be prepared. 
be prepared for watching that show with a knife and fork, okay? So to this, I have added most of my ingredients. I'll now be adding some coconut milk to this. Now, this is straying away from the old-fashioned pigeon peas and rice. Because remember, Crackpot Kitchen is teaching you guys how to cook old-fashioned Turks and Caicos dishes with a twist, okay? The coconut milk complements the pigeon peas and rice very well. Guys, do try it. To my pot, what we have added with some olive oil, some butter, some onions and peppers with a little bit of celery, garlic and thyme, pigeon peas. Just added the coconut milk. I think I need a bit more pigeon, and pigeon peas, so I'll just add a bit more to this, okay? About half a tin, one and a half tin is good enough for me, okay? I'll allow that to work its magic for a minute, but first I have to show you guys what I did with the pigtails and the salt beef. The steps I took with preparing my pigtail and my salt beef, I boiled them first. I removed that first water because that first water is to get rid of all that extra salt because it will be too strong for what I'm doing, okay? And now the second water I'm boiling it in is to get it into a nice tender, nice doneness so that it will be easy to eat and fall off the bone, okay? I'll remove this from the back, give you guys an idea of what I'm talking about. My peak tail, my salt beef, here's the salt beef, they come in the same bucket. You cut it up, you can boil them together, no problem. They were both cured and salt and prepared the same way. To this now, I'm gonna add some to my pot. Now, I told you guys on the last show, if you have from micro on your counter, don't try this at home, okay? This is granite. You can rest your hot pot on granite, no problem. No problem, you rest hot pot on granite, no problem. What are they? Great. Here's the trick. Right now to this, I'm gonna add some of the broth, the stock, which my pig tail and salt beef has been boiling in to my peas and rice. So I'll give it that nice beefy, porky taste that'll run all through the rice with the saltness from the pig tail. It'll be amazing. Trust me, if you guys have had traditional pigeon peas and rice before here in Turks and Caicos Islands, this is how we do it, all right? Look at that. Mm -mm. Man. Mm -mm. I'll rest this back there. With our oxtails, what I'm gonna do now is show you guys how the color has ran all through here. Look at this. Nice brown color to these oxtails. Look how pretty that is. Tell me this ain't pretty. Say it, I can hear you. Tell me this isn't pretty. This look good. Good, 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 good. Mm -mm. Right now I'm gonna place a cover on my oxtail pack to allow it to steam. So that my oxtails will become nice and tender. I'll give this about half an hour to 45 minutes to do its thing. I'll continuously add water so that it will continue steaming because as it cooks, the, the, the liquids will dry out so you have to continue adding water. I'll show you step by step how to do this. Remember guys, with seasoning your pigeon peas and rice, you want to be careful because remember we added in there salted pig tails, salted salt beef, and the maggi. So you want to taste your, your, your pot first before you add more seasoning to this because you cannot fix something that's salty, but you can fix something that needs more salt. All right? Okay, we're okay on the salt level. Now, to complete this, I'll add some hot water. To this, we added about two and a half cups of water. So remember guys, it's two cups of water to one cup of rice, okay? Anytime you're cooking rice, no matter how you're cooking it, if you have one cup of rice, you add two cups of water, okay? I'm gonna let this do its thing. Put a cover on this. Look at my axle, that's going good. I'm now gonna add the rice to my rice pot. It's boiling nicely. I have some rice that I washed and cleaned already. I'm gonna add this to the pot. Now I have a chef eye. I've been cooking rice for years. So I'd have to measure this. I can tell 
when I've just about had enough. There's also a spoon test that was done years ago. We're standing the spoon up, but evidently my pot is too small for this big spoon. But I'm just gonna eyeball it. All right, right now, I think I have enough rice in there. Gonna cover this up. You know what, not yet. Let this rice do its thing. I'm now gonna season my oxtail pot. Okay, give it a seasoned taste. I'm going to add some Cajun seasoning, a little complete seasoning. I can taste this needs some spice to it. So I'm now gonna add a piece more habanero pepper. And the secret to this now, not the secret, the name behind it all, my Guinness stewed oxtails with butter beans is the Guinness, okay? We're gonna add the Guinness in here. Now that Guinness flavor is gonna run all through there. What the hell? That's it at all. Let's get drunk over some oxtails, what you say? All right, I'll add my top to that and allow it to finish doing this thing. All right, to my rice, I wanna turn this up just a bit so that it won't stick, so that the liquid can travel all through it. which will allow it to cook properly. Allow that to do its thing. Hi, you're 101 with Chef Nick on the Crackpot Kitchen cooking show, where we're shooting from the penthouse suite of the lovely, beautiful, peaceful Point Grace Resort. I'll be preparing some of our most exotic dishes cooked right here in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Today I'm prepared to show you how to make a spring roll for our appetizer with one of our most exotic seafoods right from our Turks and Caicos waters. Now I'm going to be serving that with a South Caicos sweet and spicy tamarind sauce. And for our main, we're going to have a Guinness stewed oxtail served with pigeon peas and rice. And yes, it will be Turks and Caicos pigeon peas and rice with pig tails and salt beef in it. So I'll show you how to get that down packed. And that's going to also be accompanied with some tropical coleslaw, some fried plantain sticks, and then moving on to our dessert, I have a special that I created just a few hours ago, which will be a North Caicos banana bread pudding. Okay, now repeat that. A North Caicos banana bread pudding. And I'll say it in the North Caicos language for you too. I got to prepare some North Caicos banana bread pudding, and I got to serve a little bit of, little bit of strawberry sauce on the side of that, and that can taste so good, oh Lord, and, and tell you why. To add to my sauce, I can add a little bit of bombarin inside my sauce, okay? So stay tuned, don't go anywhere. We're gonna be right back on the Crackpot Kitchen cooking show. So if your remote is too far, don't reach for it because you don't wanna turn the channel and miss what's coming up. If your bathroom is too far, leave it. If your fridge is too far, call your wife or call one of your neighbors next door to get what you need at the fridge, all right? I'll be right back. Welcome to Crackpot Kitchen Cooking Show with Chef Nick. Food, fun, and sheer comedy. Now, what I'm prepared to do is show you how to make a spring roll with my most exotic fish lineup. Okay, what I have today is an exotic new fish to our Turks and Caicos waters, which is a lionfish. Now, it's been promoted that everybody should go out there and catch as much lionfish as you can and create as much new dishes as you can with this fish. As well, to my seafood lineup, I have a lemon shark, which is known for its color, which is a lemony kind of color, if you take notice. And I have a cowfish, known to some people as well as a box fish because of its unique shape, okay? Drum roll! And the fish I'll be selecting from my seafood lineup is lemon shark. I'm gonna be preparing a hash lemon shark spring roll for you today on the Crackpot Kitchen cooking show. Now, normally when you hear of hash shark, it's prepared with white grits or white rice 
or in corporate in a rice, you can even do that. But I'll show you how to prepare it in a spring roll today here on the Crackpot Kitchen Cooking Show. Okay, let's get started. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to boil and prepare a lovely filet of lemon shark that I have here. Okay, what we have to do to start our hashing process, you have to first boil this, okay? Boiling it incorporates some flavor from it as well as give it that texture that we need to start threading it and that will enable us to hash it, okay? First I'll st I started off, I have some hot water there boiling, I have some onions here, I have some celery and some carrots. Now celery, carrots and onions is known in the chef world as a merpois, okay? You can Google it, check it out, it's a French term. It's something, it's the basic ingredients you use to incorporate flavor in any stock or meat that you're using. But my secret to this is also whole spice. Okay, the whole spice will remove any of that fishy fishiness that the shark meat has and it will incorporate some nice flavors into there. Trust me, you'll be impressed. You should try this at home. Before adding our shark to our water, I want to incorporate a bit of flavor inside there with our mirepoix. So right now, I'm going to place the shark into a plate. I'm going to wipe our board down. Okay. Have some carrots. You don't need too much of this. I have some white onions already chopped. Uh, give me about two sticks of celery that I'm not going to use all of. That there. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is add my ingredients to the pot. Take some onions here, chunked onions. Remember, this is only to incorporate flavor, okay? You don't have to be fancy cutting with this. Just to add to some flavor, okay? As well as adding my whole spice. I'll let this boil for a minute or two so some of the flavor can come out of the vegetables and then I'll let the fish inside. Now remember guys, we're not making soup, we're, make, we're just boiling this enough so that it will form a body that will make it easier for us to thread and once we're already done threading that, we'll hash it, okay? So it has already came to a boil about a minute or so. I'm going to now add the shark meat to this, okay? Let that do its thing. Put the top on that, and I'll leave that to boil for about, say 10 to 20 minutes, okay? I had some prepared earlier, which I allowed to cool, and I picked it until I got a consistency of this, okay? It's quite simple and easy. All you have to do is pick at it until you get this consistency, all right? I'll now begin to show you our hashing process. Right now we have diced celery, diced white onions, puree garlic, we have some diced yellow bell peppers, some diced green bell peppers, some diced red bell peppers, today we'll call our yellow bell peppers gold, so it's red, gold and green, okay? We have some fresh thyme, I think something's missing, something's missing, oh, ain't nobody's business but mine I say ain't nobody's business but mine and my baby. You guys know I love butter. Everything tastes good with butter. I've said that once, I've said that twice, I've said it a million times. And I've seen you followers, you guys are doing it as well, okay? Okay, I have a pan preheated already to this. I'm gonna add my baby some butter. Uh, look at that sweating now. Ain't no sweat smell better than butter sweat. All right, gonna add some onions into this. Okay, we're gonna add some celery to this. Some yellow bell peppers, green bell peppers, red bell peppers. Wanna add some shark. Man, you guys should smell this, trust me. Mm -mm. And then a bad mm -mm. That's that good mm -mm. Okay. Uh, let this hash down. Why we call it a hash? Because we have to get a color to it. We're gonna let it sweat out and come down to a bit. We're just gonna have a beautiful color. And I'm gonna add now some fresh thyme. 
and a little of my garlic puree. You don't want to go too much on the garlic puree because garlic is a bit heavy on certain dishes. As our shark is hashing, we have beautiful colors of the red, gold, and green in there. To this, I am going to add a little bit of lemon, fresh lemon juice to our lemon shark. Not because it's called lemon shark, that means it has a lemon taste. Remember I told you, the, ta the, the, the reason why it's called lemon shark is because of the color, okay? Now, adding a little bit of Cajun season, a little bit of complete seasoning. You don't wanna go too heavy on seasoning this. To this, I'm gonna add some fresh habanero to our pot. Now, you don't wanna go too much on this because habanero is very spicy and I'm not going to the seeds. I'm just cutting some from the tip. Now, cutting habanero peppers, remember guys, you wanna wear gloves because this is hot. This stays on your finger for about a few hours or so, even after washing, okay? If you itch something with this, that'll be the washest you ever had, all right? Adding a little bit to our pot. As that hash is going on, very beautiful. Watch this off. Now I'll add a stick of butter. We have a beautiful color forming. The smell is amazing. Man. Right now, we have achieved a beautiful color, which I'll stop this at and allow this to cool for a bit, because to roll a spring roll, you have to have it cool. You don't have to, but I'll suggest that it be cool because your spring roll rock will tear. So I'll allow this to sit down for a bit, let all those flavors marry. Such a beautiful color, look at that. The red, the gold, the green, the flavors are nice. I approve of the taste. I put a stamp on it and I'm gonna leave that as is. Now moving into our tamarind sauce. Right now I'm gonna introduce you guys to what a tamarind is. I'm sure most of you Turks and Caicos Islanders, you do know what a tamarind is. This is a tamarind guys, all right? Grown locally here in the Turks and Caicos Islands on every tree island wide, okay? Not hard to find, they are in season and this is exactly the season for them. Okay, we're gonna be using this today on our, our Crackpot Kitchen cooking show. I have some prepared already, and this is what it looks like out of the shell. Okay, I'm gonna do a twist with that today. I'm gonna to make a South Caicos sweet, spicy tamarind sauce to go with our lemon shark spring rolls. Okay, with preparing my sweet and spicy South Caicos tamarind sauce, I'm gonna add these to my pot. I'm gonna add in about one star anise. I'm gonna eyeball this to about quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg. I'm gonna eyeball this to about quarter of a teaspoon of cinnamon. Some red chili flakes, which will give it that spiciness. I will add my sugar, my deuce. Nothing wrong with adding just a bit extra sugar, okay? To this, we wanna add some water, okay? You want the water to be about just a bit over the tamarind, okay? Then we wanna add this to a fire. Okay, we're gonna let that boil for about half an hour or so. You can continue adding water as it goes. Um, make sure to test this for the sweetness level, for the spice level. There's nothing wrong with tasting it, testing it to your liking. Okay, with preparing our shark, lemon shark spring rolls, I have some spring roll wrappers. You can get this from your local IGA. Not expensive. This costs about three, three bucks something. You can make your own spring rolls at home quite easy. And I'm gonna teach you how to do it today. All right, place the spring roll on the board. What I did, I, I beat about three eggs or so. This is the egg wash. And I went and bought myself a lovely paintbrush, okay? See, I am a painter as well. This is culinary arts. So today I'm going to be your artiste, okay? I have my brush. I'm going to take my brush and reel it around inside the egg like so. I'm going to paint my spring roll wrap. Now what the egg does, 
that allows the wrap to stick to each other so that it will seal, all right? We have our hash shark, which we're gonna add to this. Now you don't wanna go too much because you wanna leave enough room for the paper to cover and wrap, all right? Now we're gonna fold each end. Like that, and like that. Okay, we're gonna take the brush and paint it over here like this. You can call me Chef Francois Nick for the day. I'm from France. Take your spring roll and you bring it over, loop it over. Okay, you wanna go easy. You don't wanna pull on this too strong as you will tear it. Wrapping in here. Okay, to get a good seal, I'll just brush the ends of these. Not too much. This is why it's also called an egg roll. This completes a very sexy spring roll, okay? So you just repeat the same process. We're gonna make about three or four of these. Remember, you're one-on-one -on -one with Chef Nick. I'm not cooking for any guests today. I'm cooking for more and more self. I may have someone popping by later, I don't know. But until then, I'll just make another three of these, continuing the same process. After rolling these, we're gonna now place it inside of my deep fryer. As those are frying, we wanna achieve a nice golden brown color. So let's just wait for it. Our tamarind preserve is doing this thing. You have to check this every minute or so. Turn the fire down a bit. Remember guys, to your tamarind sauce, you can add sugar as you go. You can add cinnamon as you go, as well as nutmeg. But for now, mine has reached a point where I am totally happy with it. I have a nice sour taste from the tamarinds, nice spice from the chili flakes, the cinnamon is all through there, the star anise is all through there. So it's gonna marry well with my lemon shark spring rolls. Watch, see, and soon you'll be tasting. Our spring rolls have reached a nice golden color. So this right now, I'll remove these from the deep fryer. Whee! Aye! Yes, it did burn me. Serve to you our lemon shark spring rolls with our sweet, spicy salt cake as tamarind sauce. Okay, after plating this, you wanna get yourself a nice chilled glass, like what I have here, I had some ice setting in that. Pass that right there like that there so. And we wanna bring out a nice Sauvignon Blanc by Barringer. You can get this from your local discount liquors. Wine cellar. Pour yourself a nice glass of that. Compliments the shark very well. And that completes it. Wow. How are you? I am great. Guys, I have to introduce you to Ms. Aishika Thomas, the marketing and reservations manager here at the lovely Point Grace Resort. So tell me, what's going on here at the Point Grace? Um, everything is going great. Uh, we're a luxury boutique property on Providenciale. It's actually the number one luxury boutique property. Stop it. Of course. Stop your lie. Lie. <laughs> you lie. All suites, and we have a total of 28 rooms on property. Um, we are open to families, even though we're the ideal property for couples. Right. It's very intimate, very luxurious, very... It's cool. very quiet around very, here. Very, very I could have actually heard a pin drop this morning. Of course. And yes. I always tell people, we're a destination in itself so right. you know and the beach bombarded. the view of the beach is amazing we Great. we are so high up right now the oxygen level has changed <laughs> and 
I know, right? It's <laughs> Chef Nick, my dear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, you came in a lovely time. Oh, Listen, wonderful. I just prepared some spring rolls. Now, I'm not going to tell you what they are because mm -hmm. I'm going to put you through a little trivia question oh, right gosh. now. Okay? <laughs> These are my spring rolls, but I'm going to tell you what the sauce is. This okay. is my South Caicos Sweet and Spicy Tamarind Sauce. All right. Okay? okay? And what you have to do, taste one of them, and you're going to tell me from my lineup of exotic fish, mm -hmm. Which one it is? Okay. Okay? Alright. Alright, go ahead and do your thing. I'll just rest this right here and make it easy for you. <laughs> You're the next contestant in line. Alright, alright. Here we go. Let's just one of them. You can eat two of them. Three, four, five. <laughs> it tastes that good. You can eat two. Trust me. Mm. Mm. It's awesome. It's good. You won't even taste it yet. Stop your luck. Okay, taste it for. Mm. Mm. I always want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you always want to have that TV moment, yeah. right? Now eat it without the sauce because you wanna you wanna detect mm. which fish it is. Go ahead. Mm. Take your time now, take another bite. Mmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Alright. So I have to tell you which one. Yes, I you make a pick. Now what we have here, okay. I have lionfish. Oh. I'm sure you've heard about the lionfish here in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Yeah. What we have here is a lemon shark. Okay. And what we have here is a cowfish. Now, you're from South Caicos, just like me. Oh, and you know what cowfish wow. is. We've eaten cowfish many days in our lives. So true. So, <laughs> you now, with the drum roll, oh. tell me what you're eating. Now, remember, guys, she hasn't been prepped for this. She just walked on my set, uh -huh. disrespectfully. <laughs> and now, she's going to pick what exactly she's eating. Do your thing. All right, I'm going to say the... What is it again? Okay, remember? Lionfish. Lionfish. Lemon shark. Lemon shark. Cowfish. Cowfish. Right. I am going to take my chance and say cowfish. <laughs> you are exactly wrong. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what you're eating right now is lemon shark. You're eating a lovely lemon shark spring roll created by none other than Chef Nick on the Crackpot Kitchen Show. Yes, I know it is. After you was wrong in making your choice, your pick, mm -hmm. I want to thank you. Thank you from the depths of my heart for appearing on Scrap Park Kitchen Cooking Show. I'm delighted to have you. Well, and thank you for having me. Right. And thank you for loving me. Thank you, thank Can you, I thank have you. This now? <laughs> Do your thing. Do right. enjoy. Right. Guys, we'll be right back on our next segment. I'll show you how to prepare my special Guinness oxtails with the Turks and Caicos pigeon peas and rice, my tropical coleslaw, my fried plantain sticks. So don't go nowhere, I'll be back. for staying with us. I'm Chef Nick and what I'm prepared to do is show you guys how to prepare my special banana bread pudding using some of your basic household ingredients. Now with preparing this ingredient, this recipe, with preparing this recipe you can use a day old bread. Now I don't want to say old because I bought this two days ago but I can put it to good use by making this pudding and you want to use some of your overly ripened bananas for this because they're soft and they're at the sweetest stage being in this condition. Right now we're going to start off by opening our bag <coughs> of bread and what you can do is just break it off so you don't have to cut it all fancy. You can use your hands and prepare this. This is a fun, fun appetizer to prepare. You can prepare this with the kids. Take your time do this. You can be creative with this. There's no rules to doing this. You can add as much as what you want to add in terms of different fruits. You don't have to use banana. You could use mango. Or just raisins. I'm using about 90% of my bread to do this. I notice my bowl is a bit small. So I'm going to transfer this into a bigger bowl. Like this. There we go. Much better. Okay, I'm going to let this sit aside for a bit. Right now to my bowl, I'm going to add two and a half cups of milk. 
You can use any kind of milk. You can use 2% milk or you can use full milk. It's up to you, whatever way you like it. And to this now, I have some melted butter. We're gonna add about two tablespoons of melted butter. We're gonna whisk this in here just a bit. After whisking in the melted butter to our milk, I'm gonna add in a little secret here to making my special bread pudding, a heaping spoonful of custard powder, tablespoonful of custard powder. Okay, but I cannot add this in here because it will form lumps. What I'll do to eliminate the lumps is add some of our butter milk mixture to this. I'll just blend it in there. See, we're doing this, we eliminate the lumps. of the powder forming in the milk. I do add this. I'm gonna add it to our milk mixture. Just like that. Just get in there a bit. All right, now we're gonna get a separate bowl and we're gonna crack in three eggs. One, two, three. Make sure not to get any shells in there, guys. After adding our three eggs to this, I am going to add a tablespoon of vanilla extract. There we go. I am going to add a quarter spoon of nutmeg like that there and right now I am going to add half teaspoon of cinnamon just half and a dash I'm a cinnamon fan as well as sugar to this I am going to add about three tablespoons of granulated sugar I'm gonna whisk this together. The reason why I'm mixing this separate because if I add the cinnamon and the spices to the milk, you'll have lumps of cinnamon, nutmeg, floating around in the milk. So you wanna add this in separately. Okay, so now I add this to our milk mixture. Oh, you should smell this. The smell of vanilla, the smell of cinnamon and the nutmeg. You can smell something going down in the oven in a minute. Oh, this smells great. Okay, I am going to rest this mixture aside. And right now, I am going to put a cut on my bananas. Put some of these ingredients on the side right away. Okay, these are these bananas are on their way out the door in a couple of days. This is what you want to use because they're at their sweetest right now. You can get rid of parts like this if you may. Skins out of the way. Okay. See, we call these touchy bananas. Touchy mean they soft to the touch. Alright. Wanna get rid of these touchy parts. And wanna put a thin, a thin dice on these. Okay. Getting back my bread. 
I am going to add these bananas. Uh, why not use a knife to help me out? Now, I am going to add some raisins to this. Ooh. And to this, I am going to add my milk mixture. Okay, we're gonna flip this a bit so all of our spices and fruits and raisins could shear. Look at that. Allowed us to sit down for about 10 minutes to soak up, let it do its thing. Now, we're gonna get our bread pudding, okay? My bread mixture has swallowed up most of the liquids. I'm gonna now add this to a buttered pie pan, okay? Oh, this smells amazing. This is simple, easy. My six-year-old can make this. Well, she, you know, if I show her how to make it, I'm sure she can get it. I'm gonna put this inside of a 350 degree oven for about 50 minutes, okay? After it's done, you're gonna be amazed at the outcome. My banana bread pudding is complete. You can look at it, it has a beautiful nice cross on it. You can see the bananas melting in there nicely. What I'm gonna do is cut and plate for you. Give you a wonderful presentation on this. And to complete this, Chef Nix, banana bread pudding. Crackpot Kitchen cooking show. During the break, my rice came down a bit with the liquid. I'm turning it up. Right now, I can see it's ready to be covered. Taking it over here to add to my plastic wrap. See, this is the trick to cooking my peas and rice. You get a complete steam. Not too sabby, you ain't gotta worry about it. I'm gonna crack the pot a couple of times. Wake it up and should be ready to go. So your rice tend to fall asleep on you. So you gotta touch her up every now and then to make sure she arrives. All right, I'm gonna place my stove on a medium heat. Allow that to, to do it and work its magic. Now we're continuing our oxtail. Let's give this a check. Okay, she's ready to be paid some attention to. I'm gonna check on my rice as well. Crack that pot. Look inside there, everything looks well. Now, to add to this, I have some canned buttered beans. Now, before, t before, before my time, what they used to do is wait till the butter beans was in season. You go picky day, picky day, butter bean, then a little bit of butter bean inside your water, then wait till your butter bean boil, and then when the butter bean don't boil, you have to then it into the axle. No. You go to IJ, get yourself modernized, pick up a can of butter beans, very nice, same way. Add it to your oxtail, just like that there, so. 
feed that in there a bit. I can smell that Guinness. I can smell the, the rootness of the oxtail. I'm gonna taste this a bit. Amazing. Everything smells great there. The, the butter beans are melting down nice. The oxtails, I can taste that Guinness in there. Right now I'm gonna add the vegetables to our pot. And now I'll have some cubed yellow bell peppers, some fresh celery, some green bell peppers, as well as some red bell peppers. And I need to get myself some zoyon. Some blanc zoyon. And French or Creole, that means white onion. Okay? To my pot right now, I'm adding some white onion. Adding some celery, some yellow bell, some red bell, some green bell, just a bit more in you. Okay, I'm gonna turn this up for a bit. This smells wonderful. I know it's gonna taste wonderful too, I can't wait. Got some nice colors going on here. I don't want to cook out my vegetables too much. I want them to remain al dente. And I'll put the cover on this to allow it to steam down for about another five to eight minutes. Right now, my rice is simmering. My oxtails are sweating down. We're gonna move into making my tropical coleslaw with apples and walnuts. So here we go. I have some julienne purple cabbage here already. We have some carrots. I'll julienne some white cabbage for you. There we go. Nice, fine, and sexy. Okay, right now we have some carrots. Now I'm gonna show you how to julienne your carrots rather than using that grater. We got a great, 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 great. And watch out for your knuckles and so forth. We're gonna move this over to our food processor. Take the top off of that. Okay, first let me get this out of the way. Put my baby over here in your rightful place. Stay there, don't move. All right? Carrots, food processor. I'm gonna push this down in here a bit. Okay, you wanna get your fingers in there? That's what this is for. Okay, you assist it. Pushing it down. Just like that. Okay, I'll cut the tip off of this. Make it much easier. And go with this. Simple. Fast, easy, and simple. All right, right now, I have my julienne carrots. Adding to that, we don't want to go too heavy on the carrots. So everything's going to mix together. All right, I have some apples. Okay, my apple has been washed and cleaned. This will add a nice sweetness to the coleslaw. We're going to julienne this. like that. We'll discard the rest of this. To this now, we want to add some raisins. Some California ripened sweet raisins. I love raisins. Mmm. You ever went to the store, got some raisins, whatever you're making, just taste one, taste two. You can't ever eat one raisin. They're like Pringles. Very nice. We're going to dance up a bit. To add to this, I'm going to add some walnuts. We're going to get some sugar. About two tablespoons of sugar. And I am going to get some cinnamon. Eyeball a dash of cinnamon in there, nothing much. 
Okay. Gonna add some mayonnaise to this. You don't want to go too heavy on the mayonnaise. You ever notice going in some places, ordering some coleslaw? The coleslaw run all over your rice, all over the plate. Remember, cabbage has a lot of liquid inside. You're using the purple cabbage with the white cabbage. So it sweats out into the coleslaw and that's where a lot of that moisture comes from. So you want to be easy on the mayonnaise. This is the exact texture I'm looking for. Beautiful color. I'll add some more walnut to this. I'm a walnut fan as well. And here we go. That's completed. After completing our tropical coleslaw, giving my oxtail a check. All right, they're ready to go. Trust me, couldn't have been no better. Nice and easy to fall off the bone. I don't want to walk that up too much. The finishing end, I let in just a couple seeds of whole spice. I had to sweat out in there. Okay, with my rice. I'm gonna check this. Let's crack this pot. Let's crack this pot, baby. Come on, baby. Show me some love in this room. Show me some love. Mm -mm. Okay, let me give us a little taste. Amazing. Okay, my rice is completed. Axel is completed. Tropical coleslaw completed. One more thing. Let's get some fried plantains on the go. Okay. Now, usually you get sliced plantains, but we're gonna make some sticks today. Okay. Similar to fries. You don't have to be all fancy with this. Let's cut them straight down. All right now, let's take my plantain to the deep fryer. I'll let that do its thing. Okay, great. My plantains are now getting a wonderful golden color. They're gonna be beautiful when I present this on the plate. Now we're gonna start plating some of my peas and rice. Now this is a technique that you see in restaurants when you get served, the rice is professionally uniformed in a circle on the plate. This is how it's done, okay? It's compressed into a bowl like this and placed exactly where the chef wants it to be. Now for today, I'm plating uniquely on a board plate. I know you guys have never seen this. You're seeing a lot of things you've never seen on the Crackpot Kitchen cooking show, and we're gonna do this here today just for you. There we go. Now this completes my Guinness stewed oxtail, pigeon peas and rice, with pigtails and salt beef, tropical coleslaw, fried plantain sticks. Turks and cakes at its best. To complete this dish, I will recommend that you go to your nearest wine cellar discount liquors and pick yourself up a bottle of Pinot Noir by none other than Behringer. This goes pretty well with your beef, your oxtails, any beef dish, for example, complements this very well. So I'll get myself a glass as I proceed to getting myself a bite. Mmm, this is good stuff. Very good stuff. Wow, what you doing today, my brother? How you doing? How you doing? Mike? Blessings, man. Guys, I have to introduce you to none other than executive chef 
Mr. Franco Forbes from the lovely Grace's Cottage right here at Point Grace Resort. Hey, what's going on with you at, at, at Point Grace? Well, right now, we are one of the premier restaurants on the island. Right. And we feature international Caribbean fusion. Right. That's the style of our meal. Right. Uh, you can get on a Tuesday night, we run two menus. Uh. One Caribbean right. and the regular international fusion. So Tuesday night is a big night for you? Yes, sir, it is. Do you have a lot of locals trafficking through there on a Tuesday night? Quite a few. Yeah. Tourists alike? More. I've had some of your dishes last night and I was just stunned, amazed. Guys, you have to check him out. He has a lovely sea bass. He has lovely fresh snapper. And listen, you guys did a number on that risotto. It was amazing. Coconut, Trust me. Coconut risotto, coconut and kidney beans. You hear that? Coconut and kidney beans straight from north. You hear the, you hear the accent in it? That's yeah. the island fusion. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, coconut and, coconut and, and kidney beans. You can hear the quick cakes, man. I love them. Trust me. Listen, chef, yes. I always keep an extra chill glass on hand in case I'm expecting guests. I didn't know it was going to be a man, but you know, it's we could do the wine it's thing. All, it's all good. We could do the wine it's thing. Right. Listen, I'll get you some of this. But at the same time, at the same time, what I'd love for you to do is try my dish. Absolutely. Yes. Mm. All right, chef. I'll try the butter bean first. Yeah, yeah, I know you like your bara band. Yeah, and I'll try it with a little piece of the oxtail. Go ahead, do your thing, man. I'll sample this as well, because I haven't tasted this yet. This pigeon peas and rice. Look at Mmm. Mmm. Listen, I sound like I'm blowing my own horn, but pop, 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 pop. I gotta blow that. Yeah, that's tender. Mmm. Mm. And that has. Good, good flavor. Excellent flavor. Thank you, man. Thank you, my brother. Now I'll try your rice. You see, that's a salt beef in there. Mm -hmm. you got that pig tail in there. Mm -hmm. Tropical coleslaw. I'm sure you've had coleslaw thousands of different ways. But that's just a little something to complement our dish today. I'll put your wine over here. <laughs> thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Big, big things. Thank you, thank you, chef. Right. Thank you, Chef. Cheers. I need a shot of this wine with that rice. Right. Cheers. Yeah, Cheers, Chef. Mm. Okay, guys, that completes our main course. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Remember what I told you? Do not move out of that seat. You'll be right back. Thumbs up, boy.